Um, what you're about to see is an episode of Ed McMahon's Star Search, which aired November 10th and the 15th. I taped this in Los Angeles late in October, and I hope you enjoy my performance. Thank you. There's a very beautiful lady here tonight to help bring out the actors. She's not only beautiful, she's also a great, talented actress herself. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Maud Adams. <laughs> Welcome to Star Search. Thank you very much for helping us out. Now, you were, we have a, a section on the show, as you may know, about our fashion models, our spokes model. You started out as a, a model and then became an actress. Tell us about that, how that happened, that transition. Indeed, I did. I started out by winning a modeling contest. Really? Yes, Where was I, that? In Sweden. Oh, great. Quite a long time ago. Yes. It was five years later that I um, got involved with the acting business. And you modeled in Sweden before you came to America? I modeled in Sweden and Paris and all over Europe. Oh, Paris. That's the model city. Now, what happened? How'd you get from modeling into acting? Because a lot of our models would like to become actresses. It's very tough. Mm -hmm. I was working in New York City, and I was doing very well as a model. I was making television commercials, and one day someone saw a commercial of mine, and uh, they called me up and said, would you like to test for a part in a movie? I got the part, but it took many years after that to actually be able to make the transition. Mm -hmm. There was a lot too more to it. You know, modeling it's, takes a lot of work and hard uh, effort, but that acting is a whole different uh, ball of wax, as we'll see right now. We want you to help us introduce the actors, please. My pleasure. Your leading lady champion is returning for the seventh time tonight. She is Cindy James Rees from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Her challenger was a child model. She's from Atlanta, Georgia, Mitzi Capture. Now the leading man, please. Oh. <laughs> the champion is Triumph of Victory number seven. His name is Scott Thompson Baker, and he's from Dallas, Texas. His challenger is a young actor from New York City, Richard Leshner. The setting is an elegant office where a promotion is eagerly anticipated. Here are the champions, Cindy James Reese and Scott Thompson Baker, in part one of Hardball. Well, come on, did you get it? I got it. All right, senior vice president. You know, with my brains and your smile, we'll own this company someday. When do we move upstairs? Uh, Sharon, sit down. There's something I've got to tell you. What is it? Didn't you get the raise? Oh, yeah, I got it. The whole package. Well, then, they didn't turn down my raise. No, it's, uh, something else. What? They've assigned me a new executive assistant. The boss's nephew or something. There was nothing I could do about it. Oh, well, then they want me to stay down here in your job, right? Well, no, actually, they've uh, <clears throat> given that spot to Jeremy. Jeremy? I don't believe that. I, I can run rings around the guy. Well, come on now, Sharon. Don't you think I went to bat for you? Went to bat for me? I am the brains behind every piece of work that you put your name on. I know that, Sharon. And <laughs> you know that I respect your talents and how grateful I am. Grateful? <laughs> Are you kidding? I made you. Now you move upstairs, and I'm stuck down here working for a greenhorn? Not exactly. Do you mean that I'm out? Fired? Listen, Sharon, believe me, there was nothing that I could do. This decision comes from the president himself. So what? Look, kid. What Mr. Jeremy says goes. This is the big leagues. Now, they play hardball up there. Hardball, huh? Fine. Is he still up there? Who? Jeremy? Yeah, I just left him. You're not going up there. Oh, yeah? Watch me, because I'm going to teach you a little lesson about playing hardball, mister. All right, thank you, Cindy and Scott. Do your voting judges. Now, how about the challengers, Maud? The scene continues with the same characters now being played by Mitzi Capture and Richard Leshner in part two of Hardball. So, you went up to see Jarrett. I told you it wouldn't do any good. Oh, I saw him all right. Well, I certainly hope you didn't do anything to interfere with my position. Now, why would I try to do a thing like that to a nice guy like you? Come on, Sharon, you've been gone more than an hour. Oh, that long? I just went upstairs and set Mr. Jarrett straight on a few things. Set him straight? Sharon, no matter what you said to Mr. Jarrett, it's too late to get him to change his mind. 
change his mind. I didn't ask him to change his mind about anything. I don't get it. Well, let's just say that I convinced Mr. Jarrett that it would be in his and the company's best interest not to let me go. You said that to Jarrett? That was just for openers. Then I um, reminded him about a few little secrets. Secrets? What are you talking about? You're bluffing, and I'm going to call Jarrett. About a year ago, Mr. Jarrett retained the services of a certain individual to close a deal. And what this person did was not entirely legal. How do you know this? What do you do, listen in on his calls? It was all quite coincidental, I assure you. You see, at the time, this person and I were a bit more than casual acquaintances. Does Jarrett know this? Oh, he does now. And he appreciates my silence. That's blackmail. Oh, Jim. Blackmail is such an ugly word. Fine. So you've got something up on Jarrett. What's the bottom line? The bottom line is that as of next week, I will be working upstairs. You got the job as my assistant. No, not quite. I got your VP spot. My job? What about me? Oh, don't worry, Jim. You get to work right here with a brand new assistant. How could you do this to me? I have been maneuvering for years for this senior VP job. And after what you did to me, you're lucky you still have a job. You think hardball's only a man's game, Jim? I'll send you a postcard from the major leagues. Good work, actors. Thank you very much. Come on in. Let's see who our champions are going to be. For leading lady, the judges give Cindy James Reese. Three and a quarter stars, her challenger, Mitzi Kapcher, receives. Three and a half stars, we have a new champion. Now stay, Cindy, because you're already in the semifinals. All right, you'll be here next week. Now, for leading men, champion Scott Thompson Baker receives three stars. His challenger, Rickard Lechner, receives two and three quarter stars. All right, you're still with us, pal. We'll see you next week. Congratulations. You two next week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, help me thank this lovely Maude Adams.